So um, let me talk about the history of open daylight from a unique perspective of an engineer who had the privilege of being there from uh, basically from the beginning. Um, so uh, the whole thing started for me on uh, one day in January 2013 where my boss sent me a brief email um, saying, you know, I want you to meet with these people about this new open source project that we want to put together uh, with IBM. And he also uh, gave me his usual pep, pep talk saying, don't screw it up, only using the F word. So um, we started meeting um, with um, six people, um, engineers in the room, uh, preparing um, like the blueprints for the controller, preparing for what we want to open source, how we want to do that. Um, you know, funny, there were three people from um, Cisco, three people from IBM. Um, I ran into two of those IBM people here at the summit. Um, it's Vijoy Pandey, who's now at Google, and uh, the other is uh, Colin Dixon, uh, our TSC chair. So uh, the other people from Cisco, they have moved on to greener pastures. Madhu Menugopal was one of them. He went on to um, found Socket Plane, which was acquired by Docker. So, you know, overall, um, very high caliber group of people. So we were preparing for the summit, uh, um, the uh, initial summit that uh, actually put together the whole thing, uh, which happened then on uh, the first week of February in 2013. And that's where the big guns came in, like the big Daves, Dave Ward, Dave Meyer, I saw him somewhere around here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Ben Fry from IBM, who was the head of open source at that time. Um, and that's when actually this could be uh, viewed as being the uh, birthday of Open Daylight. Uh, it's uh, been a collection of you know, the original Platinum members, which included big companies like Cisco, um, uh, IBM, Citrix, medium companies like Brocade, and some startups like uh, Big Switch Networks. Um, it was very interesting times. At, uh, we, uh, as some of you probably may know, um, there were two code bases contributed uh, initially to Open Daylight. There was the uh, floodlight, and uh, then um, uh, there was what was at that point called um, uh, Cisco One controller. And really, uh, it was a tight race between the two code bases, which one is going to be um, chosen as the code base for Open Daylight, or maybe uh, we could figure out you know, how to uh, create a new code base out of the two. Uh, so you know, the engineers were running, uh, from both teams, were running at, at high gear, doing demonstrations, you know, preparing uh, presentations and kind of presenting their case uh, to the newly formed Open Daylight community, which consisted of all the engineers and people uh, from, uh, from the founding members. Uh, the race was very close, uh, and uh, we even came to an idea that we should be merging the code bases. And this was a really great idea, but, you know, we were like building, we were having two race, race cars that were, we were trying to find out which one's going to be faster, and uh, we wanted to merge them, and this would be kind of the merged code base. We would be build a monster truck. Now, uh, it's... Uh, you know, we would take components from uh, wheels from this and, uh, you know, the, the body from that, the decals from yet another controller. And the idea was, you know, if we have a combined code base, we can get advantages of both. Uh, it may not be longer the race car, but, uh, you know, it would do the job. It would destroy everything else. And um, um, it... Um, uh, the two teams tried to made a, made, made a go at it and um, didn't come to an agreement. And uh, then a calling got together with um, uh, Dave Erickson uh, of the uh, Stanford fame, and they create the Dixon Erickson proposal, uh, the architecture. Uh, I don't understand it. I, I don't 
I, I don't think anybody does at this point, but you know, it was a great proposal at the time and an attempt to consolidate uh, two code bases that um, really would be very difficult to consolidate. Uh, in the end, one code base won, and uh, that was the um, Cisco One uh, controller. And it won because of the uh, secret weapon that it had, the SAL. Uh, at that point, really, Floodlight was the more mature code base, and um, it had deployments, uh, but it wasn't very modular. Um, what the Cisco had go, the, the one controller uh, code base had going for it was the modularity. And the modularity was built around this component in the middle called the SAL, service adaptation layer. And again, when the community had to decide which code base to go forward and to build uh, new, new solutions on, they decided that modularity would be more important than um, having a mature code base. And in hindsight, I mean, that was the uh, kind of right decision. So the SAL uh, really, you know, with network people tend to think in layers, so it layered the system nicely between into applications, the SAL, which was the secret source or the secret weapon, and then protocol plugins. And this enabled the controller to talk not only OpenFlow on the southbound, but um, um, uh, any protocol that uh, the designers or users uh, or the community decided to uh, implement. And uh, it also allowed uh, people to uh, put applications um, on top of the controller uh, that the designers of the controller and the implementers would not quite necessarily know at the beginning what they would be. So it's basically uh, much more flexible in terms of uh, the functionality, what can be, what could be done with the controller. So uh, um, we had a SAL, and off it was into implementation. And in the end, it actually turned out we didn't have one SAL, we had two SALs. And those of you who suffered with us through hydrogen, you remember the AD SAL, the API-driven SAL. Um, and um, uh, it's uh, basically, it's about flexibility. And um, uh, we uh, really uh, had two implementations, two different approaches to that middle layer. Uh, one was kind of API driven, uh, a little bit firm and um, not as flexible. So we took the flexibility to the next layer, uh, to the next level with um, the model driven SAL, which took any kind of a, you know, networking uh, or application um, level notions or concepts out of the controller uh, and just basically focused um, the controller base on kind of pure plumbing. That way, uh, the power was completely given to application developers uh, who could define whatever functionality they want to have. Um, now, there were kind of three of us coming up uh, with the concepts of the SAL. Uh, Neil, I acknowledged one person, Tony, in his keynote. And I would like to have another person, a key person acknowledged in this keynote that contributed majorly. Um, and that is Robert Varga. Come on. Come on up, Robert. So Robert is the most prolific contributor um, for Open Daylight uh, across all of the releases. And so we have this uh, gift for you, which is um, travel and registration to two Open Daylight events of your choice for awesome. free. Now, that has no benefit to me whatsoever, <laughs> since I'm sure he might want to speak when he's at those. Um, but in any event, you have thank that, you. and uh, you get to pick your events and uh, uh, enjoy. And thank you very much cool. for all your work. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you, guys. So, Phil, you guys actually got a really good deal from Cisco with Robert. Uh, you know, as a platinum member, we need to contribute 10 members, 10, 10 engineers. So we've got 10 engineers contributed plus some, and then Robert counts for another 10. Uh, so off we go with Sal, and you know, eventually uh, the duel was won by uh, the MD Sal. Now, everything was model driven, so now we got into modeling. Um, so we 
uh, oh no, that's not, we're, we're about inner beauty here. So we chose Yang as the modeling language and um, uh, the modeling really took off. You've got models going on in IETF, you've got models going open config and everything, every functionality uh, that is defined in um, uh, open daylight is actually defined in Yang models. Uh, so we really are in the modeling business. Now I'd like to talk about the Ogre. Uh, the Cisco team was originally perceived as being the Ogre in the room. And you know, it's the big bad guy who is going to squash all SDN innovation and um, uh, you know, it's a notion that was perpetrated by some of the SDN startups uh, that um, really wanted to change the world and you know, kind of destroy Cisco and take its world, uh, its role in the world. And I think as everybody has found out, uh, and as we have proven over the years, we've got, we've been really good members of the community. And uh, we, uh, all of us uh, that participated in the project uh, have strived to build a community uh, and um, um, to um, further the cause of open daylight, if you will. So like the character in here, I mean, we, I think maybe we've been at times ugly, but we're a quite lovely, uh, a lo lovable ogre. Now, to conclude, um, I've really seen uh, this mighty oak that open daylight is becoming grown from a small acorn, from that acorn that we started watering in uh, that room three years ago, the six of us. And it's been exciting to see it growing when community, code base, use cases, technology, vendors, and products. And um, uh, I'm really privileged to be a part of it. And I'd like to thank all of you um, for great friendships. And um, I learned a lot from um, you know, the community and everybody who's participated in the project. And uh, uh, just would like to say let's, uh, uh, keep it going for uh, quite some numbers years of quite some number of years to come. Thank you. We started meeting um, with um, six people, um, engineers in the room, uh, preparing um, like the blueprints for the controller, preparing for what we want to open source, how we want to do that. Uh, you know. Funny, there were three people from um, Cisco, three people from IBM. Uh, I ran into two of those IBM people here at the summit. Um, it's Vijoy Pandey, who's now at Google, and uh, the other is uh, Colin Dixon, uh, our TSC chair. So uh, the other people from Cisco, they have moved on to greener pastures. Madhu Menugopal was one of them. He went on to um, found Socket Plane, which was acquired by Docker. So, you know, overall, um, very high caliber group of people. So we were preparing for the summit, uh, um, the uh, initial summit that uh, actually put together. The so um, let me talk about the history of Open Daylight from a unique perspective of an engineer who had the privilege of being there from uh, basically from the beginning. Um, so uh, the whole thing started for me on uh, one day in January 2013, where my boss sent me a brief email um, saying, you know, I want you to meet with these people about this new open source project that we want to put together uh, with IBM. And he also uh, gave me his usual pep, pep talk saying, don't screw it up, only using the F word. So, um, 